All right, here we go with the actually a kind of difficult but really fun question. And again, we've seen the result. We've seen the results of this question before, so it shouldn't look new. The statement reads: Calculate the force of the magnetic attraction between the northern and southern hemispheres of a uniformly charged spinning spherical shell with radius big R, angular velocity omega, and surface charge density sigma. Okay, this should sound familiar back in chapter five. All right, so what we need to know, pointing vector, that's cool. What we know is a force via Maxwell's stress tensor. Here we go, this is the fun part, is equal to F is equal to the closed integral of um, on the surface S dot dA. So if we have several surfaces, the closed tells us we need to add all of them together. So think of a cube, you have six surfaces. Uh, and then the, uh, that little double arrow lets you know that T is a tensor. So it has, a, think of it as a matrix, in this case, a two by two with X, uh, X, Y, Z in both directions. And that's what we see here kind of expanded. And the uh, indice notation, TIJ is equal to uh, epsilon naught with EI, EJ minus one half, uh, delta IJ, E squared, plus one over mu naught, BI, uh, BJ minus one half, uh, Dirac, delta ij b squared notice that this looks really familiar to the energy which we had one half epsilon e squared plus one half or uh, one half uh, times one over mu b squared except now we have to consider every direction if we're dealing with the force okay so let's go ahead solution so to start off let's use symmetry to establish that the force is in the z direction this is important in saving time with the tensor. Also note that the only the magnetic attraction, so no E component is needed. Okay, so um, that saves us two two folds because you notice that I and J, we only need to have one direction Z. So we need to find out what X, Z is, uh, Y, Z, and, um, and then uh, Z, Z is, or excuse me, Z, X, Z, Y, and Z, Z. Okay, because that's our first direction. So um, let's break it down term by term. We see that we have the tensor dotted with DAZ, okay? Since we're interested in the force, our stress, uh, our integral has to run on the Z only. So that's why we have the Z component of the stress tensor, so everything that has to do with Zs. In this case, the ZX times DA DX plus TZY DA DY, and then so on and so forth. All right, so if we plug these in, what we see here is that we have, for each component, we have BZX minus one half, uh, delta ZX, B squared, DAX, okay? And then you notice that because of the Dirac delta, that term cancels. So all we have is the fields and the Z and X components working together to find out what this uh, force is. Similarly for Y, the Dirac delta cancels that uh, B squared term, and we're just left with B, Z, B, Y. But in the Z term, the Dirac delta goes to 1 because it's the same indices. Note that B, Z, B, Z gives us B, Z squared minus B squared, but notice that the contribution of B, Z, X and B, Z, Y make up for that later. So let's go ahead and factor up that mu naught, and we see we got B, Z, X, D, A, X, and then plus B, Z, B, Y, D, A, Y, plus B, Z, B, Z, DAZ minus one half B squared DAZ. All right, what we notice now is another cool trick. Since this is all, since all the terms um, to the left have a Z component, you left factor that out, and you're left with uh, BX DAX plus BY DAY plus BZ DAZ. Okay, and we notice that that is equal to B dot DA. That is awesome, that is cool. Okay, again, we're only looking for what the field of the Z's doing since we want the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. So by symmetry, this makes a lot of sense. Again, dealing with the stress tensor is kind of messy though. So we also found back in chapter five that uh, with this, uh, that the magnetic field for the scenario was with the magnetic moment equal four pi, four thirds pi r cubed times the um, uh, uh, sigma, omega r which was the uh, current there the surface current so once we plug it all in we see that we have inside pretty standard uh you know mu naught or two-thirds mu naught sigma r omega z hat inside and outside we have mu naught m four pi little r cubed 
since we can go bigger than the shell volume and the dipole we look like a dipole outside all right so we want to we want a surface that encloses the entire upper hemisphere say a hemispherical cap uh just outside r equal r and the equi equatorial circular disc which is cutting in half okay so for this hemisphere bz okay we're on the outside now so we go looking inside we're just outside so we're looking at bz equal mu naught m over 4 pi r cubed and then the r hat component we have to break down to the z part and the theta hat component we have to break down to the z part remember that these unit vectors are risk they're they're pesky and they are composed of components themselves Co uh, cartesian coordinate components all right so once we plugged it in the r hat component the z component of the r hat vector is cosine and the uh component for theta hat is negative sine once we plug it in we see what we have here we use the uh oh misplaced parentheses we use pythagorean theorem to sub in what sine squared is so that we can write everything in terms of cosine which is what we do all right and then da is equal to r squared sine theta d theta d phi in the r hat direction which again we're pushing that to the the da dz component so we put another cosine in so if we want b dot da what we do is chug this through we see that the dot products cancel away and now we see what we need accordingly in the purple uh, we need this for the fact that the stress tensor we found b dot da and now what we need to do in the stress tensor is unite b squared which is b dot b which we do that very quickly again be mindful of how things combine and so if we're looking at the z component of the stress tensor with the differential area we combine all this stuff and we see that both terms have a mu naught m over four pi big r cubed squared term together okay so i'm trying to color coordinate everything where they all came from you see that the hemisphere bz component is equal to that you see that the dot product of B and DA is equal to the purple and that the B squared part is equal to the red. Again, with the DAZ uh, component coming from the blue. So let's put this all together and try to simplify the best we can. All right. So when we do this, uh, you see we have a lot of stuff that can be, you know, factored out. The one half and the R squared sign theta, cosine theta, d theta, d phi can be right factored with the big parentheses as we see there, leaving us with the distributed 4 and 3, which gives us 12, 4 and 1 gives us negative 4, and then we have minus 3 cosine and minus 1, and so let's just simplify that down. Okay, what we see here, though, is that we need to plug in the magnetic moment, so that's done in red. And we see that we cancel a lot of things pretty quickly. Um, so go ahead and push this through. After that, we see that the mu naught squareds cancel with the mu naught in the denominator so that we can write this as omega or, or sigma omega r over 3 squared times 9 cosine squared minus 5. And then that r squared from the differential part that we fact right factored can now be included into the big square. So we have mu naught over two uh, times sigma omega r squared over three. Again, I put that in red so you see where it's going. And now you can see quickly that we just have a big theta integral to deal with. So the force of the hemisphere is equal to zero to two pi, zero to pi over two, it is a hemisphere. Use your polar and azimuthal angles accordingly. And you see that we can split up the phi integral pretty quickly and everything else is just what they sign to deal with. And we see that if we did a u sub on cosine, we have a sine theta d theta to move out. And we can integrate using power rule. Pretty nice. Easy to deal with. Cosine at pi over 2 clearly is 0 and 0. Then at 0, it's 1 and 1. So put the minus sign from taking the difference in the integral. And we're able to simplify this down to negative mu naught pi over 4 times sigma omega r squared over 3 squared. All right. That's only one part of it. Now we need to do the same thing for the disc. It's a, qu a little more quick, but you see here, BZ is equal to two, third, or two over three, mu naught, sigma, um, R, omega, and DA is uh, everywhere inside with the phi hat. 
again, phi hat, we just need to convert to z hat. Um, in this particular case, since we're pushing upwards, um, nothing really changes there, thankfully. And then b dot da is equal to that, b squared equal to that. And now we can just plug it into what we found in the form for the stress tensor before we integrate. So to find the force after we simplify, we see that we have force on the disk in the z direction is equal to negative two mu naught times that whole parenthesis thing squared. Then we have from zero to two pi and zero to r since we're a disk and we're using the field inside. All right, that goes pretty quickly. Nothing much to worry about. You see that we have an r squared and an r squared, so that can go inside the big parentheses. And we're left with negative two pi mu naught times the big parentheses, sigma omega r, omega r squared over three squared. So the total force then is these two things combined. Notice how both of them have that big parentheses, so we factor that out. Both of them have a pi omega, or yeah, pi omega naught, so, or pi mu naught, excuse me. Factor that out. So the coefficient is negative one half, and then the other coefficient is negative two, and those both combined at nine over four. Okay, but we know that nine is three squared, and four is two squared, so we can put that into the square uh, parenthesis there as three and two. Uh, notice that the threes cancel, so what we are finally left with is a total force of negative pi, mu naught, big parentheses, sigma omega r squared over two squared in the z hat direction. Wow, what a uh, messy problem, but what a fun way to find this for geometries that are well beyond us the sphere. And it's not as hand wavy. This is something that we're going to see again, and it's really fun.